Happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for this another wonderful study. We are still studying the book of Ephesians. Um, today we go to lesson five, horizontal atonement, the cross and the church. Um, if I was given a chance to edit that title, I'll just call it John 316. But before we get to the real, real study, I'll ask that we bow down for a word of prayer. Let's pray. <clears throat> Thank you, God, for just being with us through the week until today. And as we're going to study your word, we pray that you'll be with us. You'll open our eyes and you'll help us to understand what is our calling. And I pray that you may forgive us our sins. You may cleanse us from within, from the guilt and the power of sin. Be with us from now till we finish. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm joined by my wonderful panel once again. I'll start from Becky's side today. <laughs> God is good. Uh, Becky and Wendy, thank you for joining us today. Karibu sana. I trust you've had a blessed week. Welcome to the Sabbath rest as we start uh, today with the lesson. Uh, we trust that we learn together and be uplifted. Karibu sana. Thank you. Um, my name again uh, is Moseti Matundura and I'm glad to be here and uh, let us uh, divide the word of God. Amen, together. amen, thank you. So uh, today our memory text comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 to 14. Ephesians chapter 2, 13 to 14, it says, But in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace, who has made us both one. You know, um, one thing that the Jewish community took pride in is the fact that they believed that they were the chosen. They were the only ones, the, the nation that had a one-on-one -on -one connection with God. So it gave them a lot of pride to a point that they looked at other communities as uh, children of a small God, I'll say that. But really, it was the truth because they used to worship God, whereas they worshipped the one and true God. But you know, uh, over time, last week we talked about uh, living in the new dispensation. So the new dispensation in this uh, context is the fact that it, it is no longer like that. Salvation is for all. It was not just for the Jew only. It is for the Greek. It is for you coming from a small village there in Kabocha. I'm sorry to use that example. <laughs> it is for you coming from Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. It is for you in New York. It is for you in Jamaica. It is for every one of us. And this week, that is what we are going to delve on. This week, we are going to look at Jesus saving both the Jewish and the Gentiles equally. This week we are going to look at salvation offered to all by Jesus. It is universal because he died on the cross thus making provision of salvation for everyone who believes in him as in John 3.16. This week we are also going to look at Jesus Christ not only destroying the walls that were standing between the Jewish and the Gentiles but also building a new reality, a new temple of God, the church where both the Jewish and the Gentiles equally live together and can share in the gift of faith. This week, we are going to just look at what does it mean, horizontal attainment, the cross and its significance to the church. Brother Moseti, we're going to start with you, the Sunday mm -hmm. part. <clears throat> what does it mean to be brought near Christ? Uh -huh. It's quite an interesting mm -hmm. um, uh, thought there that brought near in, in Christ, Christ. Sorry. and mm -hmm. I believe that it is, it is always in mm -hmm. Christ. All mm -hmm. our benefits are in Christ, together with Christ, accepted in the Beloved, and um, Christ is the only way. You know, so I think it's, um, it shows us, um, like if you read the text, for instance, it says that, uh, um, wherefore remember. It is, a, it is interesting how he tells them to remember, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we've looked at this before, you know, that we need to uh, recount, you know, the goodness of the Lord and mm -hmm. to say he that what the Lord mm -hmm. um, led us, you know, and, um, and, 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 um, and, 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 and then to appreciate, you know, the, that great salvation. Mm -hmm. Um, so it says, wherefore remember that he being in time past Gentiles in the flesh mm -hmm. who are called and circumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So they used to be despised. You know, these were heathen. Mm -hmm. You know, remember that's 
the kind of um, people that you are, you know. And, and, and then it says, and I like the fact that it is always in times past. Um, even uh, uh, Peter talks about in times past, the mm -hmm. format um, when we walked in the last of, uh, of the Gentiles. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. So as in, it is interesting in times past. And I believe um, a life of sin is good enough in the past, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and right now we should walk in newness of life. Mm -hmm. So it says in time past, Gentiles in the flesh. And then it says that at that time you were without Christ. Mm -hmm. So it says that they were without Christ. And then they were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. I've always loved mm -hmm. this expression. Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Mm -hmm. Strangers, you know, from the commonwealth of Israel. In Israel, um, we, see, we see that in Israel we, we are partakers of all these beautiful things, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, ascended with Christ, seated with Christ, resurrected with Christ, all these things. So mm -hmm. as in, there, was, there were aliens, there were strangers from this thing. And then, strangers from the covenants of promise. And even all those promises which God gives mm. um, in his word, they were strangers to them. And then it says, having no hope and without God in the world. Mm -hmm. So as in, it is a terrible scenario, mm. you know, to be in, you know, without Christ. You have no hope and mm. you are without Christ mm -hmm. and you are in the world. Mm. So um, um, this is the scenario that um, uh, they were in. But now, uh, it says, but now, another, another good mm. but here, mm. but now. But now, um, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. That is the work of salvation. That is the work of redemption. Uh, and so those who are aliens now become, um, they become uh, uh, Jews. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they become spiritual Jews, as it were. And, and, and those who are um, strangers to the covenants now become partakers mm -hmm. um, of these covenants of mm -hmm. promise. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and, and those who are without hope now ha find hope in mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. And so um, it tells us that um, it shows us how great a salvation we have in Christ and, mm -hmm. and, and the, the, the kind of things that Christ dies for us, does for us. You know, mm -hmm. he, has, he has good thoughts for us, mm -hmm. plans to give us a future and a hope, we are told by Jeremiah, mm -hmm. an unexpected end. And you can see that um, Christ, um, what Christ offers is always something much better. Mm -hmm. And the state that we are in without Christ is a terrible state. Mm -hmm. So it tells us that salvation is a good thing, you know, and it's a wonderful thing. Even, even, um, even right now, even without thinking of heaven, you know, uh, godliness is profitable unto all things. So as in, um, that's what I would say, you know. And um, you ask yourself, um, from whence has God uh, taken you? You know, what... Uh, has been your journey with the Lord. And um, then we should be grateful every day and we should uh, cherish and not neglect this great salvation. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we should appreciate, you know, the, the power of God and the mercy of God and how he has brought us. We have been brought near. We're no longer mm -hmm. far, mm -hmm. but we are near, mm -hmm. you know. And um, that's, that's, the whole, uh, that's the whole plan of redemption and the whole uh, purpose of uh, of, of, of salvation to bring us near mm. and not uh, far. Mm. Amen. Thank you. The whole plan of salvation is to bring us near mm. and not, as ha not have us very far. Mm. Um, even when you, you, you see someone and you want to be friends with them, you, you start being near them, you know. And I feel that's the same thing that Christ is applying here. And I'll, I, when you read the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse. 31, by faith the harlot did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. My, my, my concern here is Rahab. Rahab is not a Jewish. We all know that. Yes. She's not a Jewish, but she's here by faith. And Amen. she's not just on this verse, but when you look at the genealogy of Jesus, I think she makes yeah, it. Absolutely. So we are looking at um, my question is from uh, not really a question, but a comment that I'd like your comment to uh, Brian is that there is Rahab and she's not the only one. What hope does that give to every one of us who feel like, um, you know, I've walked so far and Christ, we are talking about Christ bringing us near. There is Rahab and the Bible records that she was a harlot and that's how we've known her all, all the time. So there's also someone who has their sin next right to their name. What hope does that give them? 
in the in the context of this uh, mm. scripture passage that you are looking at this week uh, 11 uh, Ephesians 2 verse 11 mm. Paul is here specifically addressing gentiles mm. and for a fact mm. they were far mm. if you look at the the times that they were in, in when they used to uh, visit the temple and all that mm. there is some point they would not go beyond yeah, yeah. and when Paul uses that phrase that he is Uh, borrowing from Isaiah 57:19 which says peace peace mm. to the far mm. and near mm. you know mm. those are the words of Christ peace to the far and near, and, near. Mm. and so uh, it's is it's true they were far mm. they were far mm. and uh, in uh, to bring it in our context when we see uh, Rahab there who was not a Jew mm. that gives you and me hope mm. That is why those names are there in, the, in Hebrews chapter 11. Mm. It gives you and me hope in the fact that Christ mm. has drawn us himself, mm. has drawn us near to himself. Mm. That yes, our sin, when we look at our sin, you look at yourself and you you you, you write yourself off. You mm. see no hope in you of mm. of no becoming coming near to to church or uh, coming to Christ and uh, giving your life to him. You write of yourself on account of you know looking at your sin with so much uh, you know you see that uh, no power can uh, mm. can I cannot be accepted mm. by this amount of sin mm. but Christ is uh, telling us that I am the one who has called you I am mm. bringing g- give that sin to me mm. and I'll take it and so there is hope for me and you mm. there is hope for anyone out there that, you know you look at your life and you say no I I I can't match up to this lifestyle mm. I can't keep up with this uh, standard of uh, Christianity. Mm. No. Christ is saying I will draw mm. you near mm. to me mm. and I'll be able to give you and I'll be able to establish you in this work. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much. There is hope for us because Christ is going to establish us. Uh Becky you are a bit unlucky because you are my friend so I know. You. <laughs> so Becky I know you you are not born in the faith of the seventh day adventists does it make you feel sometimes that christ has redeemed you to some light and if that is how it makes you feel please talk to us and just if you can elaborate what is the experience um thank you very much mm. when paul writes the ephesians in ephesians chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 he says that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also having believed mm. you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise paul creates a situation where there is a particular class of people mm. who first believed mm. now these people who first believed mm. are to be to the praise of his glory mm-hmm. And then he points out to the Ephesians and saying in him you also trusted. Mm. And that's where most of us come in. Mm. That though we, we were not Jews, mm. we were Christians. Mm. We 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 were the believers yeah. were first called Christians mm. at Antioch. Mm. But in this Christian this Christian um religion that we are in, mm. we also came in at different spaces mm. from different philosophies, different world views, different mm. perspectives. Mm. But what Paul points out to having been the one unifying factor is that in you also are trusted after you had the word of truth. Mm. So it is the word of truth mm. that makes the difference mm. that enables us to be gathered all mm. as one in Christ. Mm. The difference is is that when the word of truth now brings you it sustains you too. Yes. yes. It is not about the, what the preacher said. Mm. It's about what the word said. Mm. So that in the absence of the preacher you're able to live according to the word of truth. Mm. If the team you joined is not living according to the word of truth, mm. you still have a chance to live according mm. to the word of truth. So the word of truth becomes the fundamental Amen. thing Amen. that Amen. brings us all to Christ. Mm-hmm. And and f- whoever is out there wondering what shall I do about my Christianity mm. you are wondering uh if you look at the mission reading mm. in the previous um studies that we have had the experience of John Bradshaw is actually shared and mm. we are told the di- one of the directors at, at it is written he says as a young man he used to search and wonder mm. exactly where to find the word of god mm-hmm. because there were so many things around him that he could not make sense mm. of but when he laid hold of the gospel of god and read the word of god and in the context of the great controversy 
he was sure he had reached home. Mm. And when he, he says that having read that, regardless of what other people were saying, he had now known the truth. Mm. So whether those who professed it were not living it or not, mm. he knew the truth mm. and he was living it. And to you from wherever you're watching us, do you know the truth? Mm -hmm. Pilate desired, Pilate desired mm. to know the truth. Mm. He asked, what is the truth? Mm. Christ had said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you, the tr will make you free. Mm. Pilate asked, what is the truth? I don't, uh, did he wait for the response? To us, we're asking, have you known the truth? Mm. Paul says, it is the word of truth that enabled the Ephesians to trust in God. And consequently, they were sealed with the Holy Spirit of the promise. Mm. And for me, that remains true. When ministers of God are not behaving according to the truth, mm. your duty is to behave according to the mm. truth. Not to see them and say, if the minister is doing this, I too will also follow mm. in apostasy. Mm. God has called us to remain true to the truth. Yeah. Thank and you, you just tell, you remind me of how, you know, the Jewish had taken so much pride in being the chosen children to a point that it became like, um, it, it never became, it was not a privilege anymore, but they took advantage of it. Uh, I'm looking for a word that can just bring out this. They, they, they relaxed. You know, we are chosen. We are Seventh-day Adventists. So mm. it's like we... Complacent. Yes, they became very complacent. They, they stopped now practicing the truth. They stopped practicing love. Could it be that the fact that you are born in the Seventh-day Adventist church, that is the pride that you... you everywhere you go, I was An born Adventist in the <laughs> <laughs> uh, My grandmother started the church. Are those the things that you are using to sustain your faith or actually the truth that God called you with is sustaining you? What is just sustaining your faith? Mm -hmm. That is the question I'd ask. We move to the Monday part. Reconciliation, God's gift from the cross. Becky, what is the significance of the cross to us Christians? Thank you. We will read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14, um, 15. It says, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in the ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Mm. When Paul is talking about this, he brings out the fact that Christ is our peace. When we talk about peace, mm. we, we already think of war mm. or we think of instability mm. because it is only those who have not known peace that desire peace. Mm. That, so when, when Paul um, describes Christ and says that for he himself is our peace, then we need to ask ourselves, what was the unpeaceful situation, if there is such a word, mm. that existed mm. that needs Christ as the Prince of Peace, mm. rightly called by Isaiah? Mm. And you realize that one of the things that was not peaceful, the instability that existed, is that Gentiles were far off. Mm. They were those people. In fact, there was hostility. You, if you were a Greek convert, mm. you'd go to a Jewish temple and then you get a a placard written, <laughs> no foreigners beyond this place. That you sounds get, like racism <laughs> in so our time. <laughs> you are in the temple, you mm. have accepted this Jewish God, Imagine. you're keeping the Jewish Sabbath, mm. you're there, you want to be, in fact, if by standards of man, you might be even good than mm. them, if you could say so. Mm. But then when it comes to their temple, you see that placard written, do not go beyond this Imagine. place. It is psychologically traumatizing mm. even for you. You mm. feel like as if you are a child of a lesser God, mm. that you do not belong. Mm. And that creates instability mm. in any way. Mm. So when we say that Christ is the Prince of Peace, mm. such was a situation that existed. Mm. Another situation we find is that because of this particular circumcision, mm. the Jews considered themselves to be uh, to be of the children of the of, of god as mm. you had mentioned mm. and they look down on others they refer to them as those of the uncircumcision mm. in fact if you read the book of acts mm. we see one of the things that paul was faulted mm. was for bringing timothy to the temple mm -hmm. and and you wonder if timothy was the convert the, the the man who knew the word mm. of god who had been taught from mm. childhood 
why did they have a problem with him accessing mm. the temple? Mm. So there was this enmity mm. that existed. Mm. It was tabu yeah, there was a lot of turbulence mm. between Jews and so other people. So they are Christians, but they are not of the same... Yeah, you're like, we are Christians, mm. but we are more Christian than you. There is like <laughs> some sort of classes. Yes, mm -hmm. we, we, we deserve Christianity. You more. guys are just mm. um, grafted. Mm. That's the, you are grafted into mm. it. So we are better mm. than you. And then the other thing is that this particular hostility became ensured now that the Jews also not knowing mm. also had a severance with God mm. because they thought in separating from other people they were doing the will of God but in mm. reality they were being separated mm. from God. So this is the turbulence that exists. And as Paul is addressing himself, he says that for himself is our peace who has made both one. Mm. Remember God wants to in the fullness of the dispensation of the times mm. to gather all in one in Christ. Mm. So Paul is actually telling them that Christ has made us one mm. and has broken down the middle wall of, mm. of separation. Mm. And now, verse 16, that he might reconcile mm. both to God in one body. So the reconciliation is not just for the Jews and Gentiles, mm. but to be reconciled all in one in mm. God. So when you look at the cross, the cross now becomes this particular significant mm. unifier. Because through the cross, we now have access to God the Father. Mm. Through the cross, the first situation where Gentiles were far from God, mm. Brother Mosetia said, mm. Gentiles mm. have been brought near. Mm. When Jesus himself died, the curtain of the t that separated the temple was rent into mm. twain. And therefore, everyone had access to the to most Christ. holy Imagine. place. So, mm. in effect, that separation between Jews and Gentiles and no longer existed. Mm. And thirdly, having now accepted, as Galatians says in 3.8, there is neither Jew, nor mm. Gentile, mm. nor male, nor female, nor Greek. We are now all one in Christ. We are easily reconciled to the Father. So, the cross alone mm. has done it. How has it done it? Mm. Verse 15 says, It has abolished in flesh the enmity that is in the law of the commandments contained in the ordinances, mm. so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. Mm. So Christ himself, through the cross, has written everything away. Mm. And uh, there is a hymn we surely say, They are nailed to the, to the cross. Christ mm. bore our burden, mm. our sin to mm. the cross and nailed mm. them there. Mm. So that we have no condemnation for we have chosen to be in Christ. Mm. Now, that was the situation of the Jews. It's, mm. I hardly ever feel that I'm a Gentile. Mm. Never in my Christian experience have I ever felt that I'm not a Jew mm. and thus isolated. Mm. But our reality is our differences are not about Jews and Gentiles. Mm. Our differences are about class. Mm. I am rich, I am poor, middle <laughs> class. Political affiliations, mm. football, mm. Um, clubs. No, there's now all these other issues that separate us. Mm. And we are required to ask ourselves, in the context of Christ, how are we dealing with this mm. separation? If you, do you find it difficult relating with those in a class below you or mm. above you? Mm. Do you relate with them well mm. or do you isolate them? Mm. And so it's very important for us to not just shut our eyes looking at it as a Jew gentle situation, mm. but bring it down. When someone who is not of our class is at select as a church leader, how do we relate? <laughs> of our tribe. Yeah, how do we relate with mm -hmm. them if he's not of our tribe? Mm. If someone, when we are having political situations mm. and we have to decide who on whose side we mm. are on, do we still... Do we still remember we are belonging to the same church? Mm. So the cross of the cross of Christ is the equalizer. All mm. we mm. like sheep have gone astray, but the Lord has mm. laid on him mm. the iniquity of us mm. all. Amen. And that is what Amen. that matters. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mosete. In that same spirit, <laughs> what what does reconciliation look like and what really does it mean to be reconciled? Uh -huh. That means that when I'm asking you that question, I'm, I'm assuming <laughs> you've, been, you've been in a turmoil, you've been in a turbulence with the believers, and you had to get to this point where you have to get reconciled, or you have witnessed reconciliation, because the lesson writer gives us an estrangement uh, situation of a mother and daughter, mm -hmm. and now they just, they, one of them decides to take uh, the high road, because... 
as we have established, Paul is taking the high road. Mm -hmm. And how can we take the high road as Christians and just work out through this reconciliation? Okay, um, I'll talk about reconciliation. In fact, I'm reminded of a text mm -hmm. I like, mm -hmm. Second Samuel 14, verse 14. Mm -hmm. It says that, uh, this is in, indeed, and it is an interesting context. The mm -hmm. context is one of reconciliation mm -hmm. because uh, Joab saw that David's heart longed for Absalom. Mm. Um, and, and, and he wanted to reconcile David and Absalom. So he, um, he went and got the services of a wise woman of Tekoa. Mm. And he put his words in her mouth. Mm. And so it is interesting that when this woman was trying to convince David to be reconciled to his son, she was making, um, she was using the, um, she was using the argument of redemption mm. and, and God himself. Mm. And, and, and it shows that even the rude soldier that Joab was, Mrs. White says, understood redemption. And it is about reconciliation. So I think reconciliation, um, the reconciliation with God is like, um, an, an, is like, um, is like um, an, an example, mm. you know. And I, it's, like an, it's like something that can teach us how we should be reconciled to one another. Mm -hmm. So this is what it says in Second Samuel 14, 14. For we must needs die. And there is water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Neither does God respect any person. Yet, so God is not a respecter of persons, class, mm -hmm. and all those things. Mm -hmm. God does not care for them. But it says, yet doth he devise means that is banished be not expelled from him. So God will always come up with a way mm -hmm. to devise means mm -hmm. that those who are banished from him should not remain, should not be expelled. Mm -hmm. So that he would... Look, he will devise a way to bring them close, you know, to reconcile. Mm. And that is, that is actually the way God does everything. The plan mm. of redemption is God who made the first move. Mm. It, is, it, was, it, was, it was God who came up with it. Now, you ask me about reconciliation. Mm. We are told that um, to us has been given the ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and one of the, one of the um, markers of uh, the last days is that people will not be loving reconciliation mm. you know people uh, those uh, wicked uh, um, uh, uh, people will not want to um, to be to be brought back together so as in um, it's something that um, it is something that we should learn from god as god forgave us we should forgive Amen. and Amen. as god um, mm. reached out to us we should also reach out mm. to others we should in fact we told we should pray for our enemies <laughs> and for those who despitefully <laughs> use us you know mm -hmm. that is that is that is mm. that is great spiritual discipline you know i don't know if you've reached there <laughs> christ told us that christ told us that our righteousness should surpass that of the pharisees oh, wow. the pharisees will tell jesus help him because he has helped us to build the temple mm. that was their righteousness mm. but 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 it has to go beyond that you mm. must also pray to jesus help him even though he has insulted me wow. you know and <laughs> and i wish him well so that's the standard that christ set for us and um and and uh, we should be people mm. who seek you know, to reconcile and, and to make peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now you are talking about reconciliation and I'm just laughing. And mm. the part that until we should be praying for our enemies. Mm -hmm. hey, how practical is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or not really practical. How mm -hmm. easy is mm -hmm. that? You've been hurt. This mm -hmm. person has hurt you. Mm -hmm. And you have, you, instead of coming, you know, when... I do something wrong to you. Naturally, you expect me to come and say, Moseti Pole. Yes. But at this point, you're the one who's the victim of the mm. situation. It looks like it's even me who, who it's, now I become the victim. It looks like you are the one mm. who has wronged me. How, how do we handle such situations? Let's just be real and talk about it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's easy to say that, talk, to pray, pray for your enemies. Mm -hmm. It is in church pulpits that nowadays you'll hear people saying, cut off. Mm -hmm. eh, if this person is not doing good mm -hmm. to your mental health, mm -hmm. do what? Cut them the off. The ministry of cutting off. Yeah, the ministry of cutting <laughs> off. I don't know who is sharpening <laughs> these machetes, <laughs> but there's a lot of cutting off that is going on in our Christian in our homes, even in churches, just briefly, how any in one line, all of us, just let's talk about it. For, <laughs> Sitting where? with Brian, then he got to Becky. Hmm. I mean, hmm? it's, yes, it's not easy. Your microphone. Your microphone. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, it's 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 it's, uh, it's difficult as you have rightly said. But when you look at it in the context of uh, your own situation, mm. 
and what you deserve mm. and what Christ did for you. <laughs> that can only happen if you are a Christian, a child of God, who has appreciated Amen. what Christ Amen. has done. When you have appreciated what Christ has, 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 has done uh, for you, that is the only time mm. that you can, can be able to do that. Otherwise, if you are not a child of God, if you are just, uh, you have not really been converted, mm. it's, it's not easy to, ah, to go down on your knees and tell, uh, you know, God, uh, mm. forgive uh, so and so. Mm. But when you have reached a, pl a place where you have experienced uh, uh, what Christ has done for you, you really appreciate what it took God to reconcile you to himself, then it can be easy. If, if you are a child of God, <laughs> if you are a child of God, mm -hmm. I'm insisting on that point, <laughs> Becky. <laughs> you know, we are looking at following God in trying times. Imagine. And uh, that's all, that is actually one of those trying moments mm -hmm. we have. This is, this is what Jesus said, <laughs> that you have heard that it was said. You mm -hmm. know the cutting off ministry. You mm -hmm. have heard that it was said. <laughs> you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or rather cut him off. Mm -hmm. But I say to you, mm -hmm. love your enemies Bless those who curse you. Mm -hmm. Do good to those who hate you. Mm -hmm. okay. And pray for those who spitefully use you and mm -hmm. persecute you. Mm -hmm. That you may be sons of your father in heaven. Mm -hmm. For he makes his son rise on the evil <laughs> and on the good. Mm -hmm. And Aww. sends rain on the just and on and the unjust. Yes. Amen. For if you love those who love you, mm -hmm. what reward have you? Mm -hmm. Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Mm -hmm. And if you greet your brethren, only. <laughs> what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do, do so. so. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. Wow. Okay, so, closed. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> it is Christ who says that is the standard mm -hmm. that we need to walk in. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we are unable to reach that standard, we, g we go back to him who mm -hmm. gave it and say, God, help Please me. Please help, help me. me. Mm -hmm. The thing is, when we are looking for similarity with mm. people, we want to be same. We don't want to be odd one out. Mm. So conforming becomes the mm. easy way out. Mm. Because you don't want to be told, you're sure you're doing this. It's the, same way. It's the same way you return tight and someone asks you, in this economy, you're giving 10%. Mm. Yeah, so there's always a way out for compromise. Mm. It's always the easy way mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. But when you look back and ask yourself, what does God require? Mm. What does the Lord require of you, O oh man? Mm -hmm. Then it becomes difficult, but through Christ it can be done. Mm. Amen. Yes. Amen. Can I say something also? Mm -hmm. I read something interesting. Uh, should be in, um, uh, in the Torah, maybe in Numbers, or is it Leviticus? And God was saying that if you see uh, the donkey of your enemy and then it defines and then it says who it, it doesn't say of thine enemy whom thou hatest but who hatest thee <laughs> so as in the assumption there is that you 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 you, you cannot control who hates you, but <laughs> surely you can control hating somebody else. It is not expected mm -hmm. that you hate mm -hmm. someone else. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I went on to read elsewhere. Even Christ says, you know, those who despitefully use you, mm -hmm. your enemies. And then he says your enemies are not the ones you, you hate, mm -hmm. but the ones who, who do evil you. to you. Mm -hmm. You see? So, um, yeah, so that's, 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 of course, Christ is not telling us that we should be we should be in intimate relationships with those who are, who are, who are doing evil. Mm. Certainly not. Mm. Because bad company corrupts good, good morals. morals. That's not yeah. what it means. But mm. we should love everyone. Mm. And we should be kind. And, and we should uh, pray for them. Mm. You know? Yeah, we should not be... Thou shalt not hate thy neighbor in thine heart. Mm. That's what he said. Amen. I've, I've had to deal with a situation just most so recently where... Mm. <laughs> I needed to forgive, and it was hard, I agree. It was hard, and I, I, I would wake up daily. I'm sitting next to this person who has done so hurtful things to me, and every day I, I'd even feel like, mm -mm, God, you're not calling me to forgive this person. Mm. You are mm. not asking me, you know. But after wrestling, it's not easy. We are mm. agreeing that. I'm agreeing. I don't know the rest. <laughs> I'm agreeing that it is not easy because I had to get to a point where Becky is saying, you ask God to help you because he's the one who has called us to forgive. Mm -hmm. So he can help you to do what? To forgive. Mm. We are 
really against the ministry of cutting off people. Mm. <laughs> we moved uh, maybe to someone would ask you, mm. the same Bible says if your hand causes you to sin, chop it off. <laughs> 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 How do they relate? Exactly. Yes. We cut off sins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't cut off we people. We are not cutting mm. off people. I think Amen. we cut off people too. Yes. <laughs> That is where we are told if somebody calls himself a brother and he is a brawler or he is a fornicator, you should not even eat with them. Uh. See? So as in, so as in, there is, there is that. You know, there is, uh, there is a brother when, 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 li like, mm -hmm. or there are statements like you can bear with their friends and families, but not with their vices. Mm. You see, that's why we draw the line. But that, that don't mean we hate people. Mm. But I think we, we love, um, we, we love reaching that point of cutting off too soon, very you know, fast. and very quickly. Mm. Yeah. So not I think doing anything absolutely. without, maybe without praying about exactly. it, without attempting reconciliation. Sure, sure. You simply say, let me cut off. Mm -hmm. and and and, uh, and, and sure. especially thirty first December, eh? Hey, cutting <laughs> off happens. <laughs> you cut off, cut off. Well, uh, I pray that we move away from that. It's not godly. It's not biblical. Breaking down the dividing wall. We are from reconciliation. Now there is the dividing wall. Becky is telling, told us that there was a placard. You cannot. This is the end for this you. End for Please talk mm -hmm. to us about mm -hmm. how that placard has been. I, I love. Uh, I love history, mm. and uh, I was one time looking and uh, you know watching documentaries on the Berlin Wall. Mm. Uh, this is uh, something that is well known. Mm -hmm. uh, during the Cold War, mm. uh, it was dividing the the Germans, the East German and uh, West Germany. And something very interesting is that you would find one part of the family is on this side. And the other part of the family mm. is on this side. Mm. And they couldn't get to, you mm. know, talk. Uh, it, it was illegal. Mm. You'd, you'd be arrested if you were found trying to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to move to the other side. Mm -hmm. And you find that with time, uh, one part of uh, uh, the divide embraced some philosophies that were so different <laughs> from the other one. Mm. And that is what uh, the division of walls can, can do. Mm. And Paul here is... Uh, trying to highlight to us that as we read in, uh, we can read it again in Ephesians 2.11 uh, verse, uh, verse uh, 15 no verse 14 for he is our peace who had met both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us having abolished in the flesh the enmity even the law of commandments uh, contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twine one one new man so making peace. You know, imagine you, you are a Gentile. You have accepted, you know, these mm -hmm. preachings uh, from Paul. And you go to the temple to worship. And you are told that, hey, you cannot go far beyond this point. Mm -hmm. It is very disheartening. It, 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 it breaks your heart. You know, you, 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 maybe you ask yourself, no, maybe this is not for me. Mm -hmm. I was, I've, not, uh, I've not been called to this. This is not for me. Mm -hmm. And perhaps uh, we, in our day, are building those walls. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I establish them so firmly mm -hmm. that when uh, new believers are coming, they reach there and they wonder, is this really for me? Mm -hmm. I'm not an uh, electrician, but I know this, that you have to do some connections for current to flow, mm -hmm. electric cu current to flow. Mm -hmm. We are talking about horizontal atonement. Mm -hmm. If you have accepted Christ, the vertical atonement, mm -hmm. you have accepted Christ, mm -hmm. you have accepted his love, mm -hmm. you have accepted his salvation, and that love is not flowing mm -hmm. horizontally, there's a problem with the connection mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm saying I'm not an electrician, but if it doesn't flow, there's a problem with some connections. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to sit back and ask yourself. Did I do the right thing? Did I? <laughs> is the connection right? Mm -hmm. Maybe the connection is not vertical. Maybe it is going uh, diagonally elsewhere mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. or downwards. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is a high thing that Paul is, is, is asking us to do. That you know, once you are connected with Christ, then it you should flow horizontally to your brother and sister. You shouldn't look at tribe. You shouldn't look at race. You shouldn't look at, uh, in our context here, even where I come from, people even go down even to the clan. Mm. And that tells you how humanity is so low. Mm. That, you know, you, you, you race, you come to country, you, you come to tribe, 
from tribe you go to to, to clan. clan in fact now you go to the houses now if you go down <laughs> <laughs> houses now you start rich poor <laughs> you, <yeah. laughs> you see it, it can be that, that that's how low that mm. you have come if we don't allow that love that Christ has saved us with mm. to be able that we are able to extend it to our brother and sister without no looking at uh, uh tribe or anything mm -hmm. but looking at that person as someone that Christ has died for Amen. That is the only way we can be able to break uh, these walls. And maybe in our churches, maybe we need to assess and look and see mm -hmm. how are we accepting new believers? Amen. Are they coming and finding <laughs> comfort? That's my point. Are they coming <laughs> and finding peace? Are they coming and finding Christ mm -hmm. and seeing in this place there is warmth? Mm -hmm. In this place there is love? In this place I'm accepted as I am? Mm -hmm. And people not looking at me, hey, you, you are coming from this place, uh, this place or that place mm -hmm. or this place. No. Mm -hmm. That I've come because Christ has called me and herein are my brethren. Herein I can find love. Herein I can find uh, uh, people who really desire my good. Mm. You know, the way you know Paul Paul uh, was was preaching to the Gentiles. He was he was doing it like people were, you know, of 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 of, of the same, uh, you know, mm. uh, where he was coming from. Mm -hmm. And that is how we should regard people out here. That we should be people who are breaking walls. In our talk, in our sharing one with another, mm. you know, in our gossips, <laughs> are we <laughs> building walls? Or, or in our sharing and talking, we are bringing down those walls. Mm. Are we being stumbling blocks to that child of God, that person who has desired, who has known and heard about Christ and wants to come in? Or people who are already in church, mm. and then the way we treat them, we start building walls. Uh, among us, ourselves mm -hmm. in, in, in our congregations. Yeah. I pray that the Lord helps us that we are wall bashers. Mm. You know, that ours is to break walls, mm. any kind of walls that are, that are, that are, are being built. And that is what uh, Paul is trying to, to encourage us. That, and, and there's something very uh, unique that came out in this, in this uh, mm. week's, uh, le this day's lesson. Ephesians 2. 14 5 maybe i can just read it and say it mm -hmm. for is our peace who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition now there are those ones who believe that this text is talking about the ten commandments mm -hmm. <laughs> that god has, has set aside the ten commandments mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is a very erroneous interpretation of that uh, that scripture mm -hmm. that, that uh, what Paul is here referring to is the Ten Commandments is the Old Testament mm -hmm. and then now you say now we are uh, some who use that word in, in, in a bad way new dispensation in a new dispensation now the, the Old Testament is done away with uh, the Ten Commandments are done with mm -hmm. now it's the grace of Christ mm -hmm. there are those who use this text to, yeah, to, to, exactly. to allude to that mm -hmm. but that is not what Paul is trying to put mm -hmm. across here mm -hmm. Paul is trying to, 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 to put to them that you know, those laws, uh, human laws that you had put that were guiding you in forms of worship that were saying, no, Gentiles should not be here, should not touch here, should not go beyond here. Those are the walls that Christ has broken in, 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 in his body you know, by going to Calvary mm. and dying there and the curtain being rent into two and now it is open. Anyone can come to Christ. Mm. Those are the things that Paul is Amen. referring to. He's not Amen. referring to the Ten Amen. Commandments. If he was referring to that, he will not uh, quote several times. He has quoted com the Ten Commandments in mm. the book of uh, Ephesians. Mm -hmm. He will not be, be, be doing that. So let us uh, uh, learn to put this in context. And the context of this is not talking about Paul uh, abolishing the Ten Commandments. Amen. Amen. Mm. Mm -hmm. I was saying that um, it, is, um, it is not the Ten Commandments because here it says the commandments contained in the ordinances. That's the ones that were removed, you know, the, those, um, those ceremonials. Uh, so as in, but not, but not the moral, you know. Yeah, and it, we say it's a ridiculous notion to say this, the, the, this is the dispensation of grace. And, and what is grace without sin? What is sin without the law? You see, so as in even grace itself, how can it be there if there are no sinners? And how can we have sinners if there is no law? Mm. So as in, it's ridiculous to say that, you know, so as in, those things need each other. A savior, sinners, the law, grace, all those things, um, they are intertwined like that and linked. That's what I will say myself. Amen, amen. And then interestingly also, mm -hmm. 
it it seems to me that those who have a problem with ten commandments only think the issue was the sabbath of the sabbath but mm. uh when you look at there is nothing when you say no jews no foreigners beyond this place mm. there is nothing like that contained in the ten commandments mm. you get when it it has to do with the ceremonies of the temple mm. so it could not there is nothing in the ten commandments that suggests that it was a dividing mm -hmm. wall the ten commandments in any case appeal to the moral conscience even before they were promulgated mm -hmm. even in those countries in those nations that practiced child sacrifice mm -hmm. they still knew killing was wrong mm -hmm. to those people who uh, even those heathen nations knew adultery was still mm -hmm. uh, was, was still wrong so we are not talking about moral issues as encoded in the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. They could not be a dividing Factor. issue. In fact, mm -hmm. they were unifying factors mm -hmm. that enabled each one of us is protected. Mm -hmm. When it gets that going down into the issues of ordinance, how I should wash my feet, mm -hmm. how many times I should pray, Sabbath, where, how walk, many kilometers yes, you should walk. I should walk the type of sacrifice I should bring, the, the lamb without blemish, the doves, now all those issues were mm. abolished mm. because they were specifically made for the Jews. Mm. Now these other Gentiles, our believers in Christ, mm -hmm. did not need to engage in the sacrificial system anymore mm. because Christ had been offered once for all, Amen. for all of us. Amen. And that should be something that we that, that, that we separate in this discussion that it is those ordinances mm -hmm. as related to the sacrificial system that were nailed to the cross because Christ became the sacrifice. Amen. There was now no Amen. other ordinance to be conducted, mm -hmm. whether Amen. you are ritually clean or unclean, right. whether you are ceremonially mm -hmm. pure or not. Mm -hmm. There was it was now immaterial mm -hmm. because there was no sacrifice to be made mm -hmm. anymore. Amen. Yes. Type made and type. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Thank you. At least now we understand that the dispensation of grace does not mean that Sabbath was abolished. <laughs> that, you know, this... We always have a contention when it comes to Sabbath. I don't know why. And it is clearly written in the scriptures. Um, could it be you are the wall that is standing between you and the next Christian? Could it be that you are the placard that is standing there? No foreigner beyond this place. Because of the things that you are doing. Because someone... You know, there's a story that is told by a preacher that I was listening to. That one time a lady came to a SDA church, poorly dressed, and she sat and... Uh, okay, before she could even get into the church, the deaconess was there ready. You cannot get into the church looking like this. Whereas she was right. What she didn't know is what made the lady get into the come to church. The, when the lady stood to tell her testimony, this, the thing is that she was always coming, she was, a, she was working as a lady of the night, so when she came from her work, every time she would hear people singing in this church, and every day this word seemed to just call her, come, come. And this day is the day that she made that decision. And this deaconess is standing between her and the call that she had been, she always had every morning. But because when the Spirit of the Lord is working, it is working, and when God says, today is your salvation, is your day, she just left and on the other side, she saw another door that didn't have any deaconess or deacon, and that's how she got into church, the way she was dressed. So could it be that you are a stumbling block? You are the wall. Like Christ is bringing the wall down. You, you are building it up afresh. I don't know. <laughs> Please ask yourself. Examine yourself, and you can answer yourself that question. Jesus, preacher of the peace. You know, there's a scripture that Christ says that uh, there's a whole chapter in Isaiah. I've really looked for it. <laughs> it says that Christ is the Prince of Priests. Chapter Where, 7. Isaiah 9 6. 9, nine, six. Six. nine yeah. six. And to us, a child is born. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's the chapter I want us yes. to read. If anyone of us is there, please just read Isaiah chapter 9. 9 verse 6 it says mm -hmm. for unto us a child is born and to us a son is given mm -hmm. and the government will be upon his shoulder mm -hmm. and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace amen amen
please talk to us. Uh -huh. Jesus, preacher of peace. I Isaiah already prophesied him as the prince. Amen. Peace. I like uh, when you always talk about preachers. Mm. It's good. Um, and Jesus is a good preacher. <laughs> and um, a preacher of peace mm. is, um, you know, like... Uh, like a preacher of good things, mm. a preacher of good things. Mm. I remember Christ came and even told Jerusalem, if only you knew the things which were meant for your peace, mm. the things that were meant for your peace, but now they are taken away from you. In other words, the things that Christ brings are things which are for our benefit again. Mm. Like um, Jesus speaks peace and Jesus, he, um, he says, my peace I give to you, mm -hmm. not as the world give, gives, give I unto mm -hmm. you. In the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So as in the peace of Christ is... It's beautiful. You know, that is the result of coming um, to Christ. You know, the result of union with Christ, mm -hmm. reconciliation with Christ mm -hmm. brings peace. He tells us, um, come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden. Mm -hmm. And then he says, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for mm -hmm. your souls. Mm -hmm. that, is what we, that is what we need, Sabbath, you know, rest. That's what we all need, you know. And... Um, Isaiah says, there is no peace, saith my God, for the wicked. Mm. So uh, as, uh, there is no peace. The wicked, <laughs> is like, uh, the wicked is like the sea when it is troubled, mm. you know. So as in, but, 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 but the, for the righteous, your peace shall be like a river, mm. you know. And, and, and uh, that, is, um, that is what we find in Christ. Again, there is that text by Paul which says, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. I like that text. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the things that we find in Christ. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So Christ is a preacher of peace mm -hmm. in the sense of the good things, the effect of the gospel mm -hmm. is peace. You see, the effect of righteousness, you know, is peace. You know, so as in, um, it is... Um, it is, it is, it is, it is this which he says, you know, which we read here. Verse 17. It says, and came and preached peace to you which were far off. In other words, there is no condemnation mm -hmm. to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And, and you're no longer at war with God. You're, you're no longer in conflict with God. There is no enmity now. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and then there is peace. So I, that's, that's, how, that's, that's how I ap appreciate you know, that text. You know? mm -hmm. And that's what we are all called to do, mm -hmm. to preach peace. You mm -hmm. know, the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. the, gospel of, um, the gospel that will cause men to be at one with God. Amen. And, and, and to be at peace with, with themselves also. Mm -hmm. Because your conscience will not condemn you. Mm -hmm. you know? And because you are doing the right thing. So I think... Uh, um, uh, it's a beautiful characterization of Christ as a preacher of, of peace. Mm, yeah, amen. even the alliteration is good. Mm, yeah. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Becky, there's somewhere where Christ says, I think it's in Luke or Matthew, that he did not come to bring peace. Uh, <laughs> what a contrast. <laughs> <laughs> Please talk to us about that. Um, mm. you, you see, we say that Christ is the Prince of Peace. Mm. Mm -hmm. But when he's now, I think it's when he's now talking to his disciples mm -hmm. that he previously I've sent you with uh, without a bag, mm -hmm. but now I tell it's you you need to carry Luke a chapter bag. Four. Mm -hmm. Now you, previously you mm -hmm. have gone without food, now you have to carry food. Mm -hmm. And uh, what Christ is trying to signify is the fact that the message of the cross mm -hmm. to those who are perishing it, it is, is foolishness, mm -hmm. and to those who are being saved it is eternal life. Mm -hmm. And now for those who are perishing that find it as foolishness, their reaction to it would be foolish. Mm -hmm. And so you would find mother and daughter separate, mm -hmm. husband and wife, mm -hmm. because of the workings of the gospel mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. The truth is so sharp that like a double-edged sword that, that the person the person who accepts it is willing to do anything mm. for it. Mm. And the person who rejects it is, is willing to become an enemy at all mm. cost. And so it's not that Christ is bringing that particular enmity between people. Mm. But it is the working of the gospel reveals the reality of the controversy that causes you to choose sides. And you just have to be on the Lord's side. Mm. Consequence of choosing the Lord's side is like our adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, mm -hmm. is seeking whom he might devour. Mm -hmm. And if he was able to enter through a serpent, mm -hmm. how much more mm -hmm. our parents, mm -hmm. how much more our siblings, mm -hmm. how much more our colleagues, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that the enemies of a man would be, be the members of his own household. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because it is them who can directly influence your activities, your belief system. Mm. And we know that we are dealing with a cunning devil. So the word of the Lord comes to us in peace, but its consequence 
by no means is not peaceful. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus says, my peace I give to you, mm -hmm. not as the, the world, world gives, gives, but mm -hmm. as I give. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and he says, great peace have they mm -hmm. love that love, love thy law. Mm -hmm. So then it gives us a whole different perspective altogether mm -hmm. that when we see Stephen, the martyr, being stoned, he is peacefully looking at heaven mm. and seeing Christ seated at the right hand Amen. of God. When we look at John Haas being mm. burnt at the stake, mm. he is able to say that for Christ, he would rather choose the path of death mm. than to betray mm. his Savior. Mm. So when we look with our own eyes, there's nothing peaceful about burning John Haas at the stake. Mm -hmm. But John Haas is resting peacefully, safe Amen. in the arms of Jesus, Amen. for he knows the peace of Christ that surpasses human understanding mm -hmm. is with him. The four Hebrew boys in the furnace mm -hmm. of fire, when we look, when Nebuchadnezzar expected them to be in trouble, mm -hmm. but the peace of God sustained them mm -hmm. in that storm. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus is talking about the fact that I come not to bring peace but separation, mm -hmm. it is a, he's a now sword. talking about the sword of mm -hmm. the word of God mm -hmm. that burns within our heart mm -hmm. and the reality of the great controversy mm -hmm. that would cause people of the same household to be enemies. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. In Isaiah, I think it's 34, 36, it says that I will keep him in perfect peace whose Amen. eyes is stayed on, on me. Amen. So, brethren, if you, uh, you want to experience this peace that Christ gives to us and not as the world, because the things of the world that give us peace, money, uh, you are broke, you are stressed, kidogo, kidogo, you've gotten an impressor, you are happy for five minutes. <laughs> You've paid all your bills, then you are go back to square one. Uh, Sijui, you are single, you get someone, then you get into marriage, you realize, uh -uh, it is not as they were saying. <laughs> you are going back again to square one. You, are, you want a job, you really pray for this job, you fast and pray, you get it. And then, A, you get all the challenges of the world. Then you are like, uh -uh, it is not... Like, the things of the world will not quench the thirst, will not give us the peace. The peace can only come from who? From God. And as we have been reminded from the scriptures that uh, God, Christ will, is able to give us peace that surpasses every human understanding. That you are binding and we are wondering what is wrong, how, how, how can you be in peace and You've lost your mom, you've lost your dad, you've lost your job. It is only because you've stayed on Christ. You, you've decided that I am looking on Christ. We move to the Thursday part. The church, a holy temple. And I, I really love this, the way that this lesson has just been... Uh, chronologically arranged. It is from one point to the next. We started from uh, brought near in Christ. We moved to reconciliation, breaking down the dividing wall, Jesus the preacher of peace, and now we go back to the church. We no longer have the placards. A holy temple. What are your thoughts on that lesson? Mm. Mm. Um, it says, uh, you know, it says that uh, yeah, we have been taken from far and then Mm. And then it says we have uh, the whole building fitly framed together, growth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Again in the Lord. It's always in Christ. Mm. And then it says that Christ and the apostles, Christ is the chief cornerstone, and you are built upon the foundation of the apostles mm. and the prophets. In other words, the word of God. Mm. So as in we are establishing the word of God and we grow and as a church, you know, feeding on that word, continuing as disciples, you know, and um, it's a holy temple. And of course, that's the, that is the... That is the whole uh, idea, to make us holy, you know, and, and, and to, to help us, uh, to enable us to bear the image of God, you know, and, um, and, and that is the church of God. Mm. And then it says, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So, um, yeah, it also talks about even as individuals, the way the Holy Spirit uh, wants to live in each and every one of us. Mm. So as in, and I, I think it is, it is that text, you know, which tells us that um, uh, in Peter that you have escaped which, the corruption which is in the world through lust mm. and you have become partakers of the divine nature Amen. through the promises of God, mm. exceeding, great and promises, uh, exceeding great and precious promises. The word of God, the word of God uh, through the spirit transforms us. We become holy and uh, we come together we, as, as believers and we form the church of God. But even as individuals, uh, we are to be temples, of course. 
we are to be temples. That image of the temple is still consistent in the sense of the individual being a temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, you become a habitation of God. That's mm -hmm. beautiful, you know. Mm -hmm. And God comes not just near, but he comes inside, you know, the indwelling Christ. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, and, 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 um, and that is a degree of, uh, a high degree of closeness, you mm -hmm. know. We've been talking about being brought near. That is a high de degree of intimacy that God wants. Mm -hmm. You know, God wants that, you know, always. He's seeking for that, mm -hmm. to dwell in us. As opposed to before we knew Christ when we were driven by our own lusts and we were doing the will of the devil, mm -hmm. you know, and probably even um, uh, devils dwelt in us, you know, but now it is the Spirit of God, you know, God himself dwelling in us. And mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a beautiful thing. Amen. God dwelling in us. That's why Paul tells us that we are the temple of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. Mm -hmm. Brian, what are your thoughts on the Thursday part? I, I like how Paul has been building this uh, mm. theme, you know. Mm. He's been addressing, let's say, individuals. You know, mm. he's been talking about, you know, yeah. uh, he started with the Ephesians. Mm. Then now we are, we, are, we are seeing him bringing in the Gentiles. Mm. And now he's bringing them together that you are to be one body, mm -hmm. one church, mm. one temple. Mm. And uh, that is how it should be. That, you know, when worship is happening in the family, when worship is happening in my individual closet, mm -hmm. when as families we are working towards knowing God and inviting God in our homes, as an individual and out there in my closet I'm praying and, and uh, working towards reflecting Christ in my life, that will be reflected in church. When we come now all together in church and that love in us, we will desire good for everyone who is coming there. We will mm. desire, we not, we not uh, look at each other as rivals or as uh, enemies. But once we do that from the basic unit in the family and it comes like that, and that's why Paul has been addressing this. He, he addressed them individually. Now he's coming to the church and running ahead of myself. Subsequently in the lessons ahead, we'll be looking at how he's now talking, addressing the church as, as, as one mm. and marching on as a, as, as a one army. Mm. So that's... If we do that in our small units, then we are building a strong temple. We are building a holy temple for, for, for Christ that people can come and find uh, solace. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. That, that's, that's beautiful. Mm. And uh, the, we, we realize that, as we said, the, the foreigner coming and finding the placard mm. feels alienated. Mm. But Christ Jesus having uh, broken down the separation, the mm. wall of separation, creates mm. a new reality. Mm. But there is a new temple, mm. the church of God mm. himself. And the beauty is that since in the prior, in the, in the former times, the G Gentiles and the Jews were separated from another by that particular mm. requirement, and even the existence of the, of the curtain mm. made it possible for only the priest to have direct communion with God. Mm. We have a new reality whereby the church is the body of Christ. Mm. The church is made up of the believers are the building materials mm. with Christ being the chief cornerstone. Mm. So much so that when Christ is the chief cornerstone and we are building the church, mm. we need to be like Christ. So I individually, though I'm a temple of God, I'm also a building material. Amen. And I am to be hewn into Christ the chief cornerstone. Mm. As you, Rumona, are being hewn into Christ the chief cornerstone mm. and Musiti and Brian, mm. that we all end up with the church of mm. God proper, mm. which is the fullness of him who makes Amen. it all in all. Amen. And that's the beauty of it all, that the perfection that Christ desires of us mm. is that he may gather all of us in one, Amen. in Christ Jesus, Amen. one body, one church, mm. one spirit. Mm. And that, 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 that automatically creates in us the need to be each other's keeper mm. because we want to build one church mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. So I need to, we want to be as perfect as he is. Mm. I, Becky, being perfect, you, Rumona, being perfect. It mm. means that whatever it takes to keep Rumona mm. hewn to the chief cornerstone, mm. I must need to. Mm -hmm. If it takes prayer, meditation, mm. evangelizing, mm. proselyting, mm. to make you remain, mm -hmm. then I will do my honest Imagine. part and do mm -hmm. that for you. And so it gives us a greater purpose. Amen. And I think this is a, the burden that Paul in the prison cell has because he knows that without the saints at Ephesus, the church is incomplete. Mm -hmm. So him being a part of the church while in prison, the saints in Ephesus being part of the church, the saints at Corinth, the saints at Galatia, the saints at the, the, the Saint Philemon, the saint Titus, Timothy, you know, all of us 
joining to the chief cornerstone forms this one big church in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. And that's the beauty of it. Amen. It's been really a wonderful study. I'm sorry we won't have like a <laughs> around comment like the previous lesson because we are constrained by time. But this has been that lesson that you really want to share with everyone that you know because we coming from when we were far to a place where Christ has called us holy temples where we are we are in unity. So my question to you will be, are you working towards the unity of the church or you are working towards the disunity of the church? And like we've learned in our previous quarter, there are only two ways. You are, all, you are either on the side of Christ or on the side of the devil. So you, you know. And uh, Joshua chapter 15 tells us, choose ye therefore who you will serve today. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. That's how he, he, he summarizes his life. And that's how we are going to summarize this lesson. Choose ye therefore on which side you will be. Brian, please close for us with a word of prayer. Yeah, let us pray. Father Lord, we indeed are very grateful for this lesson that we've just had. And we've seen, Lord Father, we shouldn't be builders of walls of division in church, in families, where we work, or where we find ourselves. But that, Lord, we should be people who are bringing down walls, Lord Father, making it easy, Lord Father, for that sinner out there who is struggling, who is looking for a way home. That, Lord, we may level the way that they may come into the uh, fold of uh, the Christianhood, Lord Father, and there they may find uh, solace, and there they may find joy, and there, Lord, they may find people who desire their good. How we pray, Lord, that we might be that in our various churches, in our families, Lord Father. Because we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.